All right, folks. Um, before I go to the next step, I just want to discuss lessons learned. This material I purchased, it was purchasing half inch MDF. And uh, I assume you're supposed to get what you purchase. But again, I made an ass of myself because even though know, it's stated to be half inch, and usually when you buy lumber, it's under the nominal size. But this happens to come in at a little over 18 millimeters. Half inch, as we know, is 12.7 millimeters. So that kind of messed up the operations of my holes. The holes measure on the order of eight millimeter counterbore, okay, with uh, a total depth of 13 millimeters. All right, so uh, um, it's not quite going all the way through the board. So uh, the total depth of the, of the hole is 13 millimeters, 13 point something, and the depth of the catabore is eight. I'm, uh, I'm hoping that uh, when I face this off, well, I'll have plenty of, of depth because I'm eight. I can now, because I need to maintain uh, with this head height, that's a little over three. I was going to go five. Uh, so I can actually mill off three millimeters on this. So I'm going to go back and adjust the board uh, thickness on the fusion file and re, uh, re run the CNC program for the facing and then we'll be back. But again, lesson learned. Measure the material, don't assume that it's actually what it is or what you thought you purchased. All right, here we are. Uh, I cleaned out all the holes, uh, put the workpiece back in, which is now secured by four screws, at, uh, one at each corner, and they are recessed. So that's what will hold the piece in place in the future, so I don't need to use these, which can get in the way. I can now take a piece of material, slap it down, such as this, and use a uh, screw directly into it, and uh, be able in, into the uh, waste material and the, or the flash, whatever you call it, and not rust, uh, run the risk of uh, boundary issues. Though it's still always good to run the boundary before uh, you operate it. So the system is set to good, set to go. Um, I position the X Y coordinates. It's now sitting at. Uh, the origin plus three millimeters in the Z axis and uh, we'll perform it. We'll start the uh, machine now and just uh, see what happens. I'm going to again have my finger close to the all important emergency stop button if I see something go haywire. Probably we'll see it in the first minute or two when it starts uh, doing the machining. Um, again, is set at the standard parameters about 12,000 rpm this machine does not have a lot of torque so you're only really concerned about lowering the rpm with concerns of fiberglass or lexan or plastic so you risk melting them so um let's give it a shot all right uh here we are facing the new uh scrap material board, baseboard, and let's rock and roll. Yeah, here we go. Getting ready to hit the stop button. The bogs down. And getting ready for the first cut. Hey! Here you look at that. Oh, 
wonders never cease. This might actually work. All right. Now this is, I'm sure, guys, is about as fun as washing paint dry. So I'm going to see if it's what it does initially and stop it if there's an emergency. But I'll come back and continue recording when it's near complete. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Who knows? Wow. It's not the quickest thing. It says here, it's going to take about 33 minutes to do this. But, let's check it out. Alright guys, we'll be back. Not quite doing exactly as uh, expected. We cut a corner. Uh away and it's leaving about I don't know a centimeter or so material at this end but it's about to cut into the screw areas that this is going to go right and uh, that's my next word is point of failure okay. nope it'll be the next fail Okay, here we are back, past the all the screws. And it survived the first screw head. So pretty much can let this guy go. And I uh, figured out what my problem was. In setting it, uh, lessons learned. I don't really need that hole. That hole is the center hole. And um, that should be flat, because that's where I use to set the origin in both X, Y, and Z axis. Now the problem is that I can't get a point to set on that, unless there's something in the way, of course. But in this case, the problem I'm gonna have is that I had it offset this way slightly, about a centimeter, to set the Z-axis, and I just traveled it back, but I forgot to reset that as zero in the Y-axis. That's why this unit is off, okay? So, um, that's okay, because I can just take that edge off with a bandsaw, because it's just scrap material. But in the future, always double check your point of origin. Alright, I'm going to let this go because I know it's missing the screw head. There's sufficient clearance. It is making a lot of dust, obviously you can see. Over here, my Type 212, I got dust on that. So I think next time, we'll run it out there with a nice Texas breeze going past to uh, help keep the dust off. But <laughs> this thing is, at least for this particular project, a dusty nightmare. All right, I'll get back to you when it finishes up. And uh, tell you one thing, that surface is nice and smooth. And it's gonna be nice and level to the machine's Z axis. I'm actually not going to have to cut the end off because you can see that the tool is wide enough. So what may have been a little mistake is only causing me a very, very minor. It's actually working out better because the waste on the corners I don't have to remove. All right, it's doing its job very dusty job, 
my 412 is uh, there in the front of it. <laughs> and so are the components over here. I don't like the dust uh, on the equipment because it's getting into the fan. Who knows how it's getting in, in here. So another lesson learned is to have a blanket will cover up as much as I can. Hopefully this is about the largest I'll ever do machining with the most amount of weight. But, wow. Definitely gonna roll it out there later and hit it with the old leaf blower to get as much dust, but it, it dust gets in everywhere. It's just, a, it's a nightmare. Poor shark is getting covered with dust as well. The alpha, yeah, good alpha's out of the way, but man, oh man. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, here we are finishing up the last bit. It's been, oh, uh, I guess about a half hour. But that's it. It is now complete. Lessons learned. This operation was very, very dirty. Okay? I'm sure woodworkers are laughing at me right now. Um, but let me tell you. If you pick up one of these machines with the hope of doing this in your house and CNC it's going to create a lot of dust. I'm sure um, in such a way that uh, you're going to be cleaning everything. I mean, I guess my point is for the uninitiated who sees these things advertised and buys them and just runs this thing without some understanding of the total cost of ownership, which includes time and money, that you have to go through with an operation. Now, um, in a moment, uh, this will end. I'll clean it up. And I now, and we'll go over some of the other items I discovered. Um, but I now have a nice surface uh, that is true to this and not as much true to that, okay? Which is important, especially when you're working with thin stock that I will be for the Proteus, such as that. So it's fiberglass. So again, these are lessons learned and things that the uninitiated who purchase a machine like this thinking they're going to be making all these cool things in the house, ends up having to clean. Okay, when this is done and off, I'm going to bring it out there and hit it with the leaf blower. I mean, everything is just covered with, with wood dust. I, I, and I actually did run the vacuum for a time, cleaning it up, but I definitely wanted to show you folks... Um, what it looks like, okay? And uh, don't be an Ed. Understand what's going on beforehand. Okay, I expected dust, and but not to this amount. All right, everyone. We're back after about a half hour of... Uh, cleanup, which included a combination of leaf blower, vacuum, and wipe down. And uh, even the boats are clean. Okay, but uh, lessons learned. Dust will get everywhere. I don't think this is something, and I'm glad I have it in my garage now, not even in my shop. Um, I know this was an extensive milling operation, but still, um, you know, dust gets everywhere. I would not want this in my shop, in a basement, in an indoor um, work area at all, unless you have provisions to take care of it. 
Um, I could, I've seen other machines have a vacuum attachment, but I noticed that dust goes in this direction, that direction, that direction, and that direction is this tool would move around. And again, that's this tool. It's a large tool. I removed a lot of material, okay? But I'm glad I made my enclosure removable. But for argument's sake, in the future, because I like to put all my equipment on carts that I can move them around, I will take this and run it out there on a nice windy Texas day. Because, I mean, why should I have enjoy all the dust when I could share it with my Texas neighbors? You know, this place is dusty as it is. Living right off the prairie, it's always windy. Bring it out there and share the dust with my neighbors. But, uh, only kidding folks, but uh, definitely run it outside. Unless you have a provision for it. I would not run it in the enclosure. That dust gets in everywhere. And I'm still spotting areas where you gotta clean it off. Uh, the downside, I, I really enjoy the machine. Okay, I really enjoy, but as a machine that does three things, it does three things on the scale of one to 10. The printing I love, laser I'm still experimenting. My first go with the CNC, I'd say printing is nine, nine, five. Um, the laser, again, I have to look at that to experiment with it some more. I did some stuff, it was pretty cool. But, you know, seven out, seven out of 10 with machining. Uh, because the cleanup is a problem. It's not a dedicated machine with a uh, removal system for the curve. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually ridges here and here, tool marks, okay? And they form sort of a shape like this and like this. So the idea again, I made this for to be uh, ground zero, to be perfectly planar to the XY of the machine. So when I do thin stock like, like this, I'm not, I'm breaking through when I'm supposed to and not breaking through when I'm not, okay? So uh, what I could tell from these tool marks is they're, they, they're, the steps go upward this way and continue upward this way. So there's something with this axis of the machine which I'm surprised because it's it's really moving back and forth at this point only. So I don't know, maybe somebody can tell me why, but these areas here in the center are smooth, nice and smooth. I don't know if that, it definitely has something to do with this back and forth and the leveling of the machine, whether it's because it's moving as, as this thing, is moving back and forth, I don't know. But, lessons learned. Make sure you don't have the enclosure on unless you like to clean the inside of your enclosure. Get either some kind of re uh, vacuum removal system. I could also stand around there when I'm doing large jobs and run the, the keep the vacuum on it. But if, if it's a two hour job, you're not gonna wanna stand there for two hours. Um, I, I even had to wipe down the wires. I'm concerned about dust or debris getting into the ventilation system for the unit, both here and on the power supply, and also along these rails, even though it is a very well-constructed machine. I really do enjoy it. So, um, you know, it's just, I don't wanna have to end up cleaning. For example, I installed a heater system to keep this at a nice toasty 40C when I'm 3D printing uh, ABS. But um, overall, I'm happy. Uh, again, I know I have a, a nice zero plane in the XY direction to do thinner material of that and get it, again, to go through where I want it and not go through where I don't want it to go through. So pretty much, uh, that's it. 
the next um, video we're going to have, I'm going to start doing this is this piece here is for the Proteus lower rudder. Okay, so the idea now, now that I have this, I can actually put a couple of screws here and there, even one in the middle, cut the rudder, uh, lower rudder out, and I won't have to worry about colliding with hold down clamps or anything like that. Here are even uh, a couple of other lessons learned. I made the mistake of running um, my uh, gray ABS spool on the machine and uh, you don't want dust on your print material. That was kind of dumb of me. I keep my other uh, material packed away in, in bags, but uh, I, I should have removed this prior to running it. I, I did clean it off as best as I can, but you don't want to take that chance. So, lesson learned, remove that. Also, for safety's sake, if you're going to be sitting with the machine as it's running or close aboard, especially when you're maybe machining uh, FR4 or something else, wear a safety mask. Um, when they do run the machine, um, they do recommend, it'll come up, that the machine recommends you wear safety glasses, have a safety shield. I mean, why not? Little chips and whatnot fly off it and have the mask just so uh, you don't fill your lungs with whatever's floating around in the air. Because it does get everywhere. You know, this MDF light stuff, powder goes everywhere. Have a great day. And again, don't do like I did. Watch the video, learn from it, and decide whether this tool, like any other tools in your repertoire, is useful for you. Have a great day. And keep your baffles clear.